Uruguay, 23rd November 2022. This week, the European Commission is carrying out inspections called audits at Uruguayan slaughterhouses. Horse meat is produced here for the EU and Switzerland. There are a small number of horses on the slaughterhouse pastures. They look good. They've been given roughage to supplement the grass. We've been documenting the cruel conditions in South American slaughterhouses for 10 years. That's also how long importers have been claiming that without them, there would have been no improvements in animal welfare. Do these images show successful importer engagement? Or is it like 2018 at the last EU audit? Back then, conditions in the slaughterhouses were manipulated for the inspections. We want to know and we are on site with teams before, during and after the inspections. Spring 2021, January to May. We survey the land around the slaughterhouses, examine their pastures, go to auctions and document the horse traders' transport journeys and assembly centers. Like every previous year, we find the victims of a cruel production process. Seriously injured horses, a lack of basic feed, inadequate weather protection. Neither the EU's nor the importers' inspectors get to see these things. Their visits are announced in advance. The slaughterhouse operators know exactly what they have to do to retain their supply licenses. From the last EU audit in 2018. All three assembly centres were empty during the four working days the audit team went to visit them. This was contrary to the specific request by the audit team as confirmed in the formal audit plan. No horses, no problems. That's the policy of the slaughterhouse operators. Inspectors see only a fraction of the horse's journey of suffering. They don't see the way slaughter horse traders buy horses in groups at auctions. The only criterion is their weight. Injuries, diseases, pregnancies, origin, none of that matters. They don't see the horses being driven onto cattle trucks using electric prods without regard for their age or health. They don't see the victims of transport on the horse traders or slaughterhouses pastures. We visit the slaughterhouses, assembly centers and auctions several times between January 2021 and December 2022 proceeding systematically. We want to show how slaughterhouse operators manipulate EU inspections. We're interested in the condition of the horses and their care, transport and origin before, during and after the audits. Clay is the largest slaughterhouse, followed by Sorel and El Amanecer. We focus on the two bigger ones. Clay and Sorel are just a few minutes apart. Both have made headlines a number of times in the past. Multiple media outlets have reported on horse smuggling and criminal activities. In an ongoing investigation, police believe that more than 1,500 horses ended up in the two slaughterhouses illegally. TV station Telenoche reports. Eh, todo se inicia, la referida a, um, al departamento de Artigas, se inicia con la presencia de equino de dudosa procedencia. Y permitieron establecer el contrabando de por lo menos 1.500 caballos. Se ponen animales que no existen y de esa forma en la expedición de guías este, ponen los caballos que ingresan ilegalmente. La mayoría de los caballos que ingresa el destino de ellos es eh, los mataderos que existen en el sur, tenemos dos mataderos, o uno que existe en el departamento de 33. A dos de ellos se les dispuso eh, la formalización por eh, delitos de contrabando y asociación para delinquir, y, y a los dos restantes eh, por coautoría de delitos de contrabando. We've been watching the Artigas Horse Auction for years. 
Again, we notice horses with fresh brands. They're driven into the auction ring and bought by slaughter horse traders. It's unclear where these horses come from. Police found smuggled horses at this very auction in December 2020. The Ministry of the Interior reports. Irregularities in a batch of 35 horses, of which 10 had another brand mark covering the original one, with the purpose of hiding the fact that they are horses smuggled from Brazilian territory. The rest of the animals had been branded three days earlier. No consideration is given to injuries. Gauchos cracking whips drive and beat groups of horses into the ring. The auction proceeds. Horse dealer Badanka is one of the buyers. We've been documenting his brutal treatment of horses for years. We keep an eye on him. Another group, young horses this time, including one with a chronic injury. It shouldn't be chased around the ring. It shouldn't be transported. The next two groups contain more injured horses. No consideration is given to them either. A mare with a foal. The foal's right hind leg is injured. Later it ends up with the other horses on slaughter horse trader Badanka's truck. Efraim. Badanka. Gabriel, perdón. Bueno, vamos. Beaten from every side. Beaten with leather whips and electric prods all over the body, including the face. A grey tries to defend itself against the electric shocks. No chance. Cramped full, the truck drives away. The injured full standing somewhere between the legs of the adult horses. We see the foal again when it's unloaded at Badanka's assembly center. It survived the journey. Unloading the horses degenerates into another electric prod session. We count 21 blows to the horse's face in this scene alone. The inspectors don't get to see these violent excesses or the other things that happen to the horses that we witness in the months that follow. We have our investigation results reviewed by experts. We don't want to claim anything that can't be proven. That's why we contacted Petra Onemus. She's the chief physician of an equine clinic in Baden-Baden, Germany. We sent her the videos in advance and asked for her assessment. We meet her in Baden-Baden. She's generally puzzled by the poor condition of the horses and wonders why horses in such a condition would be slaughtered at all. We discuss with her some cases typical of those we've been documenting for years. The first is a badly injured horse on slaughter horse trader Badanka's pasture. We asked Dr. Onemus whether we in Europe would keep a horse alive if it was injured like that. No, absolutely not. You would euthanize that horse. It doesn't matter what the circumstances of the injury were. The horse would have to be euthanized immediately. Keeping or transporting a horse in that state amounts to serious animal cruelty, in my view. Change of location. Sorrel Slaughterhouse. A horse with severe laminitis. This painful inflammation requires urgent treatment, but no money is spent on it. Clay again. The 
December 2021. Here we see multiple cases of severe neglect and a failure to help horses in distress. A severely lame horse. It tries to stay with the group. Its right front leg appears to be broken. This grey mare is obviously seriously ill, and not only that. This horse is highly emaciated. It is cachectic. It has no musculature left at all. There's atrophy of the entire trunk musculature, and the horse is very clearly lame in the left front leg and right hind leg. Aside from everything else, it's an offense to approve such horses for human consumption because we don't know what its underlying disease is and an underlying disease could be infectious and that could be dangerous to humans. Just a kilometer away from the clay slaughterhouse as the crow flies, one of their staff runs an assembly center. Again, carefully hidden from prying eyes, we find horses in serious distress. This lameness looks more like a nerve problem to me. We see the typical drooping shoulder. It's actually a classic case of radial nerve palsy, which again probably happened during transport. The horse should be separated. It's constantly being chased away by others, which is exhausting and painful. A horse is lying on the ground just a few meters away. It's in very bad condition. This horse is on its side and has a high respiratory rate with very shallow breathing. You can also see from its distended nostrils and when it breathes through its mouth, which is very unusual for a horse, that it's gasping for air and probably getting far too little oxygen. It urgently needs medical help because by the looks of it, the horse is in danger of suffocating. January 2022, we approach the Sorrel slaughterhouse. To avoid discovery and gain an overview, we observe the pastures from the air. A horse is lying on the ground at the edge of a group. It's barely moving. We suspect it is sick. We check on it again the following day and find it hidden behind a wooden wall, a driving stick beneath its hind leg. It looks like they try to get it to stand. The horse is lying there on its side, making mechanical, uncontrolled leg movements. It's lying in agony and I think it's close to death. The root cause could be colic. The horse needs urgent medical help or should be euthanized. Uruguayan culture prevents horses from being euthanized. That alone is reason enough to stop imports. Horses are basically left to die. In the European legal area, doing that is a punishable animal welfare offense. Many horses that should be euthanized are transported kept temporarily at assembly centers and delivered to the slaughterhouses. That means days and weeks of suffering. We go to the auction in Sarandi del Yi. The horses stand unprotected in pens. Some of them are gaunt, some are false. The horses stand here for up to three days. We see no feed. We hear the weight of a group of horses in the ring being called over the auction loudspeakers. It's a clear indication that horses here are also being sold to slaughter horse traders. A number of sport horses are sold at the auction. We want to know if they are also sold for slaughter. One of the horse traders freely admits that some of them are. What he says is confirmed at our next inspection visit to the Sorel slaughterhouse. A large group of Arabians are being unloaded from a truck. Most of them are sport horses. They may not be slaughtered under Uruguayan law. Sport horse owners have confirmed to us on multiple occasions that their horses are routinely given medicines that aren't allowed to enter the food chain. One example is the painkiller phenylbutazone. In Uruguay, this is dispensed without prescription or monitoring. We check for ourselves at a pharmacy. Buying it is easy. Nobody asks us for a prescription. 
Also in Deutschland ist es so, dass wenn ein In Germany, if a horse is given phenylbutazone, it's no longer allowed to be slaughtered. If these drugs are not monitored, there's certainly a high risk of residue. We also find horses that most likely have a sporting career behind them at the third slaughterhouse, El Amanecer, the smallest to be EU certified. Again, some of them have chronic injuries. There's little doubt that these horses will have been given medication during the course of their lives. The emaciated condition of this horse shows that the injury, probably a poorly fused fracture, is not new. Horses lose weight when they're in pain. A mode of torture particular to the El Amanecer slaughterhouse are the cut tails. This means the horses are left at the mercy of insects on the slaughterhouse pasture. Their old habit of standing head to tail no longer helps. We notice many horses without ear tags, which means no proof of origin. Like this pregnant pinto mare. And again, weak dying horses receive no help. Meanwhile, horses are being slaughtered. We've been observing these staff for some time. Their treatment of the horses is brutal and unprofessional. Every horse is beaten in the chute. It's standard procedure at every one of our covered visits. The horses are stunned and bled right behind the entrance. They sense what's coming. They hear the noise and smell the blood, which causes flight animals to panic. It's made even worse by hosing them down with water. The blue driving flag is only waved during inspections. The rest of the time, it's turned around and becomes a baton. Transport vehicles play a major part in the horses' suffering because of all the injuries to their heads and legs. They're built for cattle and are unsuitable for horses. They would be prohibited in the European legal area. A worker sees us. The unloading process immediately becomes slower and calmer. They know how it should be done. And this is how it's done during the inspections if horses are delivered at all. A very different picture when the workers feel unwatched. Shambolic, uncoordinated driving sends the horses into panic. They bang their heads repeatedly and violently against the crossbars. The way these horses are being driven looks very unprofessional. The driver has a flag stick in his hand, but you get the sense he has no idea what he's doing. He's hitting the horses arbitrarily on the head. It's utter confusion. The horses don't know what to do. You can see that the horses are totally panicking and have no idea where to go, in which direction to go. One horse climbs over the other, total confusion. The hedge through which the horses have to pass is much too low. They all have to lower their heads and the bigger horses bump into the hedge door. You can see the door moving. He should really be standing back there to drive them forward. He's basically standing in the way. Yes, he's in the way. The horses are being driven from behind, but then when they go where they're supposed to go, they get hit again with the flag. A horse has become trapped in the hedge rope. 
another consequence of unprofessional behavior on the part of the workers and unsuitable transport. Total chaos here too. The exit is too narrow, the hatch too low. The exit quickly becomes blocked, but the driving continues. Almost every horse hits its head or back against one of the hatch doors at some point. You can hear the impacts even from far away. Every single one can cause injury. A fully loaded truck carries horses to the Sorrel slaughterhouse. We asked Dr. Onemus what she thinks of it. This vehicle is definitely not suitable because horses shouldn't be transported in groups. Horses should be transported individually. She's referring to petitions between horses, which we have never once seen used for transporting horses for slaughter in Uruguay. If a horse falls in a fully loaded truck, the others stand over him. The danger of being trampled to death is considerable. You can see the implications of a fall when you see how much strength and space it takes for the fallen grey to get back to its feet. If the truck had been full and in motion, the grey would have had no chance. Open trucks exacerbate and increase the risk in extreme weather situations. We frequently see the consequences of these journeys on traders and slaughterhouses pastures. This typical head injury, for instance, caused by a crossbar or hedge that's too low. But also leg injuries. These are caused by reinforcement grates on the floor. They're intended to prevent the horses from slipping. But what they actually do is create an injury risk. If a horse gets its hoof caught in the grate, it panics and tries to escape. The result is that the pointed ends of the grate can cut into its legs. Here, the grate has even bent upwards and become an additional hazard to heads and bodies. Typical injuries then look like this. Untreated, they can become life-threatening infections. Veterinary assistance is not given to horses for slaughter. When people think of Uruguay, they think mainly of the sun, but powerful thunderstorms and torrential rain are also common. So horses should have enough shelters that can withstand heavy weather. The ones that there are at the Clay, Sorel and El Amanecer slaughterhouses are far too few and often broken. As with this one at Sorel, shade nets over the pens hang down in tatters. They can't hold off the heavy rain. This is well known and it's not the exception. EU inspectors already said that the shelters were insufficient back in 2018. The facilities available, water troughs and sun shelters, were clearly inadequate for the large number of horses indicated in the documents. Moreover, some shelters had roofs in poor condition. They asked the Uruguayan government to urgently address these deficiencies. Three years on, there are still no more than a few token weather shelters. We notice that the pastures with shelters are empty most of the time, like here at Clay Slaughterhouse. This stubborn refusal to comply with the requirements of the EU inspectors applies to all three EU certified slaughterhouses. In April 2021, shortly before the announced inspection, which then had to be postponed until November 2022 because of COVID, we observed busy construction work at the El Amanecer and Sorel slaughterhouses. A few pens are quickly roofed over and decrepit old shelters in the pastures are replaced with new ones. On this shelter at Sorel slaughterhouse, we can still see traces of recent construction work. But even the new shelters are too few and too small. The only horses to get shade are ones that can dominate others. Here's a direct comparison at Sorel Slaughterhouse. Before the audit, torn roofs hang down. They are mended in time for the audit. November 2022. The postponed audit date is approaching. As in 2021, we see a flurry of activity at the slaughterhouses. 
The pastures empty out, like here at Sorel Slaughterhouse. Very few horses are in poor condition. The horses are still standing on the dusty slaughterhouse pastures without feed or protection from the weather. In 2018, the audit reports noted negatively that the slaughterhouse pastures were empty. They seem to have learned their lesson. Now, the slaughterhouse operators are manipulating the audits using a small number of healthy horses. Audit Week At Clay, we see around 60 horses instead of the several hundred that are usually there. They are on a green pasture for the EU inspector's visit. The dusty areas without shelters are empty. It looks almost like a private horse farm now. Healthy, well-fed horses on green grass with fresh roughage. The Sorrel Slaughterhouse is also well prepared for the inspection. Empty pastures, few horses, repaired roofs and the outside pens that are normally overcrowded are almost empty. The auditors can be content, provided they don't notice the manipulation. The auditors have left. We visit the slaughterhouses again. It's Friday, 2nd December 2022. Sorrel Slaughterhouse. The pastures are filling back up. The horses are standing on parched fields again. Feed is as sparse as it was before the audit week. And the pens are full again. The staff are demonstrating their unprofessional side again. Chaotic driving, beating and shouting in crowded pens. Senseless and dangerous for these frightened flight animals. The few shelters belong again to the stronger horses only. The picture at Clay Slaughterhouse is the same. Full pastures, horses in a pitiful state, no weather protection and insufficient food and water. That horse is drinking from a mud pool. We can assume if horses have good clear water available from a normal watering trough, they won't drink muddy water. So it isn't just food that's missing, it's water too. Two weeks after the EU inspection, we observed the unloading of horses at Clay Slaughterhouse. The flag is a baton again. It's not waving now. It's hitting heads and stabbing from above. Horses with and without ear tags are unloaded, included injured ones that receive no help, like this severely injured mare. The next day we find her on the pasture with others. Horses as lame as that one are basically handicapped. That horse is clearly handicapped. It's being mistreated by the others. That's perfectly normal in a herd of horses because they try to exclude disabled members. It's part of their hierarchy and you should always protect disabled horses from that. They should always be kept separately. We check on the horse a number of times. The evening comes, but it hasn't been separated, nor has it received medical help in the course of the last 24 hours. Two weeks after the audit, the feed situation is still dire. The horses search the pastures, but find only dust, stones and excrement. Clay doesn't want these horses' misery to be seen. A high mound of earth along the road prevents passing cars from seeing in. We stop for a moment, film over the earth wall and notice a severely lame horse. Then we drive on to Sorel Slaughterhouse. Their pastures are also full again. Feed is insufficient and we also see injured horses. It's very hot today, 33 degrees Celsius in the shade. A single shelter provides a few horses with shade. Most of them remain unprotected in the open. One day later, it's now 39 degrees. A mare and her newborn foal stand unprotected in the blazing sun. And at all three slaughterhouses, we see horses without ear tags again. 
Only the slaughter horse traders know where they come from, which puts European consumers at risk. They cannot know whether what they're eating is meat from smuggled horses or from horses used for sports that contain drug residues. We've been showing horse meat importers and the EU Commission pictures of tortured and dying horses for 10 years. That's also how long they've been describing themselves as dedicated to the welfare of horses. And the horses suffering continues. They ignore the fact that the slaughterhouses are in a different jurisdiction, that South American culture stops horses from being euthanized and that slaughterhouse operators have been manipulating inspections for years. Ten years of suffering are proof enough that all of the promises and interventions have failed. The only solution is to stop the import of cruelly produced horse meat.